Hi, welcome to Marine Gurukul video series. In this video, we shall cover an important topic as far as ship stability is concerned. And the topic is change of trim with change of density. When a vessel is afloat, the force of buoyancy equals to the displacement or the weight of the ship. The two are in equilibrium as per what we know as the law of flotation. That means the displacement is equal to the buoyancy. And what are they equal to? They are equal to some, some volume called as volume of buoyancy into the density of the water in which the vessel is floating. For an intact vessel, this volume of buoyancy is same as the underwater volume of the ship. Now, when this vessel with the same displacement, that means the left side value not changing, goes to a water of a different density. So obviously, to make sure that the product of these two terms remains the same as the displacement is same, the volume of buoyancy undergoes a change to compensate for the change in density of the water in which the vessel is floating. As a result of this, as the volume of buoyancy changes, this will lead to a change in draft and this shall lead to either rise or sinkage of the vessel. The change in draft leads to change in volume of displacement. Obviously, if the draft changes, the volume of displacement would change and the change shall be both in size, that means the volume, as well as the shape and this change in size and shape will lead to shift in center of buoyancy of the vessel why because this center of buoyancy is the geometric center of the volume of buoyancy or volume of displacement the longitudinal shift of b now b may shift vertically transversely longitudinally but here since we are interested in trim so we talk about the longitudinal shift only so the longitudinal shift of b changes the trimming lever to change the trim because of the there is a shift longitudinal shift of b it's going to change the trimming lever and the change in the trimming lever would obviously lead to change in trim the change in trim by head or stern depends whether this b shifts longitudinally forward or aft. If it shifts forward, obviously the change in trim would be by stern. We are saying talking about change in trim, we are not talking of the resultant trim. And if this B shifts aft, that is center of buoyancy shifts aft because of water vessel moving from one density to another. And if B shifts aft, the change in trim shall be by head. Now, when a vessel goes from a water of one density to another, the hydrostatic draft is affected only because of rise or sinkage. Why? Because the hydrostatic draft is the draft at center of flotation. And as the center of flotation acts as the fulcrum of the ship, when she inclines longitudinally or transversely, so there will be no effect of trim at, on the draft at center of flotation. Therefore, the hydrostatic draft, which is the draft at center of flotation, which is unaffected by trim, shall only be affected because of rise, of rise and sinkage as the vessel goes from water of one density to another. However, the drafts at any other point than the high draft along the length of the vessel including the forward and aft drafts are affected because of both the factors one of them is rise or sinkage which was also affecting the hydrostatic draft and they are also affected by change in trim which happens because the vessel has moved from one density to another the change in trim depends on factors though we have already said if b shifts forward the change in trim shall be by stern if b shifts aft change on trim shall be by head but if you want to summarize in terms of two factors the change in trim depends on two factors one is 
whether the vessel is going from lower density to higher density or higher density to lower density. And secondly, how is center of flotation placed with respect to center of buoyancy? That means which one between LCF and LCB is greater than the other. These two factors considered together shall basically be responsible for determining whether the vessel with change of density experiences a change in trim by head or a change in trim by stern. Let us now consider what we have said so far through a simple case scenario. We have a ship or a vessel going from water of higher density to lower density and the ship's LCF is greater than LCB. So that means the vessel is floating at a water line W1L1 and in this case you can see W1L1 is the water line in water of higher density. B is our center of buoyancy as LCB is less than LCF so center of flotation is forward of B and as the vessel is in static equilibrium G is vertically above B. Now when this vessel goes to water of lower density she is going to experience sinkage and her draft is going to increase. Now as the vessel goes from water of higher density to lower density we all know she would experience sinkage. Why? because the reduction in density has to be duly compensated by increase in volume of displacement so that their product which gives the displacement remains same. Now the vessel sinks to a new water line W2 L2. So what do we see that when she was in water of higher density she was floating at W1 L1 water line now in lower density she sinks to W2 L2 so there is an additional volume which gets immersed which is represented by this green volume represented by small v out here. So what do we see in this case that in water of higher density the volume of displacement was the underwater volume up to W1 L1 and in water of lower density the volume of displacement is the underwater volume up to W2L2 which is sum total of the earlier underwater volume and the additionally immersed volume represented by small v. Now in this diagram W1L1 is the water line in higher density water, B is the center of buoyancy in water of higher density, F is the center of flotation of the vessel, G is her center of gravity, W2L2 is the water line in lower density water and small v is the volume that is immersed due to sinkage. Now here we make a small assumption as the sinkage in this case and obviously it would have been rise had the vessel gone from lower density to higher density as this sinkage is only a very limited quantity or limited value so we can assume that the water plane area between W1 L1 and W2 L2 the two water lines is identical and remains unchanged. So if the water plane area from W1 L1 to W2 L2 remains unchanged then the volume which comprises of integration of these water plane areas that means water plane area multiplied by the sinkage its geometric center would also lie in the same line as the geometric center of all the areas which will contribute to this buoyancy or this additional volume small v. That means the geometric center of this green shaded volume small v would lie at the same location from after perpendicular as the center of flotation. Why? Because this volume small v has been assumed to be comprised of water planes which are identical from W1 L1 to W2 L2 and each of those water planes have their geometric centers at, at F and therefore the geometric center of the volume shall also be at in the same line. So this small b is now the center of buoyancy or the geometric center of this small v. 
the volume that has additionally got immersed. Now, because of this volume which has got additionally immersed, the center of buoyancy which was here as the geometric center of this underwater volume up to W1 L1 is now obviously going to shift. The center of buoyancy shifts exactly the same way as center of gravity shifts. When you load a weight, center of gravity shifts of the vessel before loading shifts in the direction of the center of gravity of the weight loaded. If you discharge a weight, the center of gravity of the vessel before discharging shifts along the same line joining the two centers of gravity, that means center of gravity of the ship before discharging and the center of gravity of the weight discharged, but it moves in the opposite direction. So in this case also, the center of buoyancy behaves exactly the same way that now you had the center of buoyancy here for this volume up to W1 L1. New volume has got under volume of buoyancy has got added. Its center of buoyancy is at small b. So obviously the center of new center of buoyancy of the vessel will shift towards the volume which has been added. As you can see in this diagram now, the center of buoyancy of the shift vessel from b will shift along this line towards small b and it shifts to a new location b1. So this B1 in this diagram is the center of buoyancy of the vessel when the vessel is floating at a water line W2 L2. That means when she is floating in water of lower density. Now you can see I'm not in, we are not interested in B's shift up vertical shift. We are not even interested if it has shifted transversely. What we see in this case is that B has shifted forward. If B has shifted forward, if you can see in the diagram that follows here, so now the weight is acting through center of gravity downwards. Center of buoyancy, which was all this while acting through B, now acts through B1 vertically upwards. And you can see the trimming lever caused. It is not the tri final trimming lever. It's not the neck trimming lever. It's the trimming lever which has been caused because of the vessel going from water of one density to another. And because of this trimming lever, you can see this will cause the vessel to trim by stern. So the result of this result of vessel going from water of higher density to lower density in a scenario where the LCF of the ship is greater than LCB, as we have seen in this now, the change in trim shall be by stern. Please remember, we are talking only about the change. We are not talking about the net trim. Net trim would be the resultant of initial trim and the trim cost. But this trim change shall be by stern. As you can see, this because B has shifted forward, so the trimming lever caused would cause the vessel to trim by stern. Like this, we can have different combinations, vessel going from lower density to higher density, LCB being greater than LCF. So like this, we, have, we can have three more combinations. Let's look at them, which you can practice by yourself. One could be vessel going from higher density to lower density and LCB is greater than LCF. The way we have discussed this first case, likewise, I would request you to draw this and practice. And the answer to this would be that the trim change would be by head. You could have another scenario wherein vessel is going from water of lower density to higher density and LCF is greater than LCB. In this case, also the trim change shall be by head. Another scenario could be vessel going from water of lower to higher density, but LCB is greater than LCF. Now, in this case, the change in trim shall be by stern. Now, all these three cases, I would like you to practice by yourself and see that you are able to establish change in trim by head here, change in trim by head here, and change in trim by stern out here. Now, we shall see all this through examples and calculate the change in trim that takes place when the vessel goes from water of one density to another and we can have two different scenarios 
one scenario could be as far as exam is concerned that we have access to the hydrostatic particulars of the ship and the second scenario could be where we do not have access to the hydrostatic particulars but we have the particulars which are given and which remain same throughout the question so the first scenario is based on mv hinship that means we have access to the hydrostatic particulars mv hinship arrives sea water anchorage or salt water anchorage in condition number 7 and berths at a berth in water of rd 1.002 calculate her drafts on berthing of course you assume that there is no change in displacement also evaluate the change in trim if any that has taken place because of her moving from sea water to dock water of 1.002 now when we go to the hydrostatic particulars of mv hinship this is the condition number seven you can see out here so even if you don't have the particulars the condition number seven is very much presented here on the screen itself now from condition number seven what we can pick up gentlemen is that displacement in condition number seven is 18529.3 tons aft forward is 8.778 meters aft is 8.792 meters trim is 0.014 meters or 1.4 centimeters by stern as you can see these two drafts out here lcg of the ship is given somewhere here it's 72.340 meters you can see that also and the vessel is obviously floating in sea water these are the particulars of the vessel in condition number seven when she is floating in sea water okay now we have this uh, vessel uh, at birth in water of rd 1.002 obviously her displacement is same 18529.3 as no weights have been loaded discharged or shifted so the lcg also remains unchanged now what we need are the hydrostatic particulars of the ship displacing 18529.3 tons in dock water of rd 1.002 now we know that these hydrostatic particulars which are there in the stability booklet they are for sea water so we calculate something called as equivalent seawater displacement what does this equivalent seawater displacement actually mean it means that if the vessel was floating in seawater at the same draft as she is floating in dock water then whatever would be her in displacement whatever would be her displacement in seawater that displacement is referred to as equivalent seawater displacement so what have we done here this displacement in dock water has been divided by the density of the dock water so this gives you the underwater volume of the vessel in the dock water obviously the draft of the vessel is directly linked to the underwater volume so if the draft remains same in sea water then the underwater volume would remain same and hence the displacement would then be multiplied by 1.025 the displacement would be 18954.6 this is what we call as the equivalent seawater displacement that means whatever is the draft of the vessel in dock water here if at the same draft she was to float in seawater then her equivalent seawater displacement would be 18954.6 tons it is with this displacement that we enter the hydrostatic particulars and we calculate the hydrostatic particulars of the vessel you can see this displacement of 18954.6 would lie in this range out here and which particulars do we need we need the displace against the displacement we need need our hydrostatic draft we need mctc we LC, need lcb and we need lcf now when i enter this these particulars with this displacement these will be the particulars for this displacement in sea water as you can see in the first row that has come here so these are the particulars for this equivalent sea water displacement in sea water now when we convert this for dock water 
that means only the displacement and MCTC would be changed. So we convert them for dock water and obviously when we convert to dock water, this displacement gets back to the same 18529.3 value. And now, so that means in dock water with this displacement, the vessel would be drawing a draft of 8.960 meters. Our MCTC gets converted to 206.505, LCB and LCF remain unchanged. So when the vessel is floating in dock water, displacing 18529.3 tons, our hydrostatic particulars would be as contained in these highlighted this box, by this box around. These are the particulars which shall be for my vessel in dock water. So now we know the LCB, we know the LCG, we know the displacement, we know the MCTC. We can get the trim of the vessel in dock water in dock water would be the trimming liver multiplied by displacement becoming trimming moment divided by MCTC and this trim comes to 3.6 centimeters by head. Why by head? Because LCG is greater than LCB so this becomes 3.6 centimeters trim by head. So the vessel which had only 1.4 centimeters of trim by stern in sea water the same trim now changes to 3.6 centimeters by head. What do we see here? How do we get the drafts forward and aft? To the hydrostatic draft that we just calculated, we apply TATF. So we calculate TATF for our ship, and these are applied to these high draft of 8.960. Since she is trimmed by head, so TF is added and TA is subtracted and these are the drafts of the vessel when she is in dock water in the same displacement condition as condition number seven. Now, so this is one part where we get the drafts. The second part the question wanted was is calculate or evaluate the change in trim if any. Now we know in condition number seven, her initial trim was 1.4 centimeters by stern. Once she goes to dock water, her trim has become 3.6 centimeters by head. So therefore, the change in trim that has occurred because of the vessel moving from sea water to dock water is 5 centimeters by head. So that is the change in trim because of change in density as far as MV Hinship was concerned, a case wherein we have the hydrostatic particulars of the vessel. Now we take a scenario in which we have a question wherein the particulars of the hydrostatic particulars remain unchanged throughout the question and we do not have access to the hydrostatic particulars. A vessel of length 120 meters, displacement 9100 tons, floats and at an even keel draft of 6.5 meters in fresh water. MCTC 130 ton meter. TPC 16.5 tons, LCF 0.6 meters aft of midships, LCB 2.3 meters forward of midships. Calculate the new drafts if the vessel moves into water of density 1.024 tons per cubic meter without change of displacement. Now in this case the vessel is moving from lesser density that is fresh water to higher density of 1.024. Here is the vessel floating in fresh water. W1 L1 is the water line of the vessel in fresh water. This is midships. Center of flotation is 0.6 meters aft of midships. Center of buoyancy is 2.3 meters forward of midships and the distance between center of flotation and center of buoyancy is 2.9 meters. Now when this vessel goes to higher density of 1.024, the draft shall reduce and there shall be a rise. The vessel now floats at a new water line of W to L2. So volume V, small v, which is represented by this yellow volume out here, is the volume which gets emerged. It comes out of water because of the vessel moving from lower density to higher density. 
So the first thing is let us calculate this volume small v which has emerged. Now the volume of buoyancy in fresh water that means up to water line W1 L1 is the displacement of the vessel divided by the density and it's 9100 cubic meters. Exactly the same way volume of buoyancy in dock water of 1.024 that means this part of the volume of buoyancy up to W2 L2 is 9100, 9100 divided by the density of the water and it comes to 8886.7 cubic meters. So obviously this yellow shaded small v would be the difference of these two volumes and this volume which has emerged because of change in density is equal to 213.3 cubic meters. Now because of this 213.3 cubic meters having emerged there will be a decrease in draft which is will be equal to the dock water allowance. So now we all know PC is equal to water plane area into density of the water upon 100. Now in this case the TPC is given in the question density is known and therefore we can find out the water plane area of the vessel which is 1609.756 square meters it will be equal to TPC into 100 upon 1.025. Why? Because the given TPC is for seawater. Now here we make a small assumption. What is the assumption? That since this rise or sinkage, which in this case is rise, is very very small, we assume that the water plane area between W1 L1 and W2 L2 remains identical. If this area remains identical, then this volume small v would be equal to the water plane area which is between W1 L1 and W2 L2 which we have assumed it to be identical multiplied by this rise. So we can calculate the rise. Rise would be then equal to this volume divided by the area and this comes to 0.133 meters. That means when the vessel goes from fresh water to water of density 1.024 it will experience a rise of, of or reduction in the hydrostatic draft by 0.133 meters. And if we calculate the same thing through fre uh, fresh water allowance and then subsequently dock water allowance, we'll get the same value of 0.133 meters. So that means draft forward, draft aft, draft mid uh, midships all the drafts will reduce by an amount of 0.133 meters because of the rise. Now what we need to see in this diagram is as the vessel has gone from water of lower density wherein she was floating at W1 L1 to water of higher density where, wherein she floats at W2 L2 we see that the center of buoyancy which was here for a water for the water line w1 l1 would not remain here this would shift why because this much volumes represented by small v and shaded in yellow here has emerged so the shift of b is exactly the way we have the shift of g wherein you load and discharge weights here it's like loading or discharging volume or adding or removing volume. So in this case, this B was the center of buoyancy up to when the vessel was floating at W1 L1. Small B is the center of, buoy uh, center of buoyancy of this volume that has emerged that is small B. So obviously the center of new center of buoyancy would be along the line joining these two centers of buoyancy but in the opposite direction why because the volume has emerged that means volume has been as if discharged so with this the center of buoyancy which was here at b for vessel floating at w1 l1 would shift to somewhere at b1 when she floats at w2 l2 so what do we see in this case that our center of uh, buoyancy has shifted forward as far as longitudinal shift is concerned 
and this BB1 in the diagram represents the longitudinal shift of B. So let's calculate this longitudinal shift of B the way we used to calculate longi longitudinal shift of G. BB1 longitudinal then would be the volume that is discharged or emerged multiplied by the distance between the center of buoyancy before the volume emerged and the center of buoyancy of the volume that is emerged that means it's the longitudinal distance between b here and small b out here which is 2.9 meters value of small b we have already calculated as 213.3 meters d is 2.9 as you can see here and divided by the final volume that means volume when she is floating at w to l2 and that is the volume underwater volume in dock water of 1.024 now when we put these values we get the shift longitudinal shift of b in the forward direction by a distance of 0 0.070 meters this longitudinal shift of b forward is the change in the trimming lever please note it is change in the trimming lever it is not the resultant trimming lever now this change in trimming lever obviously would lead to change in trim so what will be the change in trim change in trim would be trimming moment cost or change in trimming moment divided by mctc so how do we get the trim cost or change in trim it will be the trimming lever bb1 longitudinal multiplied by the displacement of the ship divided by mctc in dock water of 1.024 when we put these values we get that the trim caused or change in trim is 4.9 centimeters by stern why by stern because in our theory we have already explained the fact that if b shifts forward longitudinally it will cause a change in trim by stern and had b shifted aft it would have caused a change in trim by head so in this case the change in trim is 4.9 centimeters by stern now we need to split this trim into its component ta at the after draft after perpendicular and tf at the forward perpendicular now we calculate ta it will be trim caused into LCF upon length. Now LCF because center of flotation is 0 0.6 meters aft of midships for a vessel which is 120 meters long. So LCF is obviously 59.4 and that gives us the value of TA as 2.4 centimeters or 0 0.024 meters. TC, TF then would be equal to TC minus TA that is the forward component of the trim change and that comes to 2.5 centimeters or 0 0.025 centimeters now if we allow the rise because of dock water allowance and the change in drafts at the two ends because of change in trim to the initial drafts forward and aft that shall give us the final drafts of the vessel so the initial drafts of the vessel when she was in fresh water was 6.5 meters even keel the rise which is equal to dock water allowance is minus 0.133 and then we have TATF which we calculated here so those values have been put here as the change in trim was by stern so TA has been added TF has been subtracted and this gives us the final draft of 6.342 meters forward and 6.391 meters aft now with this i hope this concept of change of trim because of change of density or in fact in a broader context it is the change in draft which is resultant of both sinkage as well as change in trim is clear to you i hope you find this video useful if you have any feedback or you need any further support please feel free to reach us on marinegurukul at gmail.com it is requested that you may please circulate this video to all your friends who may be needing to use it in case you wish to get automatic noti notification for our upcoming new releases you may please subscribe to our channel 
Thank you very much for watching Marine Gurukul video series. Thank you very much.